So technically it's what's known as a large language learning model. What that means is it's being trained to understand human text, human output, and to imitate it. There's no intelligence behind it as such. It's effectively a statistical analysis of what humans say about particular topics. And then if prompted for that topic, it can regurgitate variations on the same topic based on what people have said in the past. So what you're gonna get when you, for example, ask it to see how good your grammar is or see what the quality of something is like, is you're gonna get what you would get from the internet, basically, of maybe more more reputable internet sources, but not guaranteed, because often it'll also take data from places like Twitter and Reddit. It doesn't have any way of knowing whether what it's telling you is factually accurate or not. So you can't trust it in that respect. I've got it to create completely fictional uh, biographies of non-existent famous scientists, and it can be extremely detailed. So I've got a biography it wrote of a guy who was at California State University and won this prize and that prize and patented this and so on, and it's complete fiction. And all I did was say, write me the biography of this scientist who did this. I didn't say he was, give me a fictional account or anything. It just generated it. It's not a reliable source of knowledge as such. It's not intended to be. It's intended to imitate human speech fictional or otherwise. The general consensus around students uh, and the use of ChatGPT is actually one that kind of concerns me at the moment. And I think the problem inherently is with the language. A lot of students, when you ask them, lecturers in particular, have asked their students, do you know ChatGPT? Do you know, you, uh, do you use ChatGPT? And many students will just laugh, kind of nervously, as if, yes, but it's not something that should be made aware. You know, I'm using it secretly to enhance or perform better on my learning than I should do. And I think inherently that is a problem. The way that these tools are presented in an academic landscape as a chief, something like an essay mill, perhaps, but it shouldn't be like that. If a student was using it to assess an essay um, instead of, say, taking it to a, a university option where you could come and have it assessed, uh, I think, like I said, you're not getting necessarily the, the unique and detailed feedback you could get from a person. I see value in the fact that if someone had anxiety or other mental conditions that might mean that they don't feel comfortable going uh, somewhere in person to ask someone, hey, can you have a look at this? Then I think there's a lot of value to the fact that, you know, people don't feel the pressure when they talk to a language model like this. We've always used tools to enhance our learning. You know, mathematics before these tools was a much more difficult thing. The abacus came by and made it easier. The calculator came by and it made it accessible to so mathematics, basic mathematics became so much more accessible to so much more of the population. Today, nobody would say the calculator was a total, actually like an overall a loss for human consciousness. If you use it correctly, it can be an incredible aid. I would hate to be without it. I'm really, it, it's so useful for so many things, but I don't use it for things that are looking for what I think. And at the end of the day, that's where the emphasis is going to be increasingly put. A lot of universities are saying, ChatGPT can write an essay that will get a good grade. And the response from a lot of other people is, in that case, your grading system isn't very good because it shouldn't be able to. You should be looking for qualities in the students that are more than just the ability to memorize and regurgitate facts, like understanding, comprehension. Can you explain why this is a good thing? Can you, th basically, can you think? That's what we need to be training people for. The days where, being able to find facts was a skill are on their way out. We can get a machine to do that. Just like we can get a machine to do our mapping for us and our navigation, we don't need to worry about that sort of rubbish. I think the most important thing uh, is to educate students on it. I don't think it's something that we can go back on now. It's kind of like a Pandora's box has been opened. Uh, these technologies are here to stay. And I think universities, academic landscapes, have a responsibility to advocate for the proper use of the technology and integrating it into their uh, curriculums, their assessment strategies, and changing the whole language around how we perceive these AI technologies. Because I think a lot of people think, 
oh, ChatGPT is like a man behind the, 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 the curtains. It's the Emerald Wizard. It's kind of this all-knowing um, kind of being. But no, it's, it's a tool. It's a, a calculator, a lathe. So I think there has to be a kind of pivot within education if these AI tools do continue to grow towards tasks that more emphasize development and uh, understanding um, as well as these kind of critical thinking skills that we're talking about where it's more about your insight and things like this, which an AI, maybe it has, but it can't provide to you. Um, and I think maybe a way to do that is maybe a pivot towards more oral exams or something like that, where it's more you come in and you have a conversation. If I had my way, some form of artificial intelligence education would be in every single discipline in the university, because there's nothing you can work in that isn't going to be interacting with artificial intelligence. And not just like in the long term future, I'm talking within the next year or two. So certainly for law, for anything that's involving processing facts, artificial intelligence is going to sweep in there. So the question is really, is it a friend or a foe to the university student? And the answer is, it depends on how you use it. Can it substitute for thinking for yourself? No. You use it as an alternative to doing your own brain work, you're in serious trouble. And to be frank, I think you deserve it because the whole point of being at university is to learn to use the damn thing. The student that uses it entirely for their coursework and never picks up a book and never engages with the content, it's a foe. But is the tool then a foe or is the student a foe to themselves? It's, it's a technology. Um, a technology is neither good nor bad. It's only good or bad when you apply it to a problem. It can be your friend, it can automate things that you know, you shouldn't have to do by hand. And I think as AI progresses and stuff like that, we'll get more and more of these kind of benefits from it. And I think we should welcome that. It's perfect for helping you. But at the end of the day, if you depended or get it to do the bulk of your work, and certainly if you submit output at any level produced by ChatGPT, no, then it's become your enemy. And you, to be frank, I think you deserve everything you get.